Hi, second grade friends. If you watched my read aloud yesterday, you know that I'm taking a break this week from Magic Treehouse and going with my friend Franklin. Yesterday we read Franklin Wants a Pet. Today, Franklin Plants a Tree. In honor of the nice weather that is sometimes here, it's nice to plant a tree and see how it grows. So Franklin plants a tree. Paulette Bourgeois and Blah, Brenda Clark. Franklin could climb trees and swing from branches. He liked to play with his friends at the treehouse and go for walks with his family in the woods. So Franklin was excited when he learned that Mr. Heron was giving away trees for Earth Day. He could hardly wait to have his own tree in the backyard. On Earth Day, Franklin got up early and dug a hole right outside his bedroom window. He wanted to plant his tree as soon as he got it home. Tonight, he'd invite his friends over to build a new tree house. Tomorrow, he'd look for an old tire and make a swing. Franklin grabbed his wagon and hurried off. He didn't want all the big trees to be taken. In the park, a large crowd was lined up in front of Mr. Heron. Franklin saw lots of boxes, but he didn't see the trees. Maybe they're not here yet, he thought. Then he saw Rabbit leaving. Don't you want a tree? Franklin asked. I have one, Rabbit replied, tapping his knapsack. Franklin was confused. He's looking for a big tree. Rabbit reached into his knapsack and pulled out a tiny tree. That's not a tree, Franklin exclaimed. That's a twig. It's a baby tree, Franklin explained Beaver. It's called a sapling. Mine's an ash, and Rabbit has an oak. Well, I'm not getting a sapling, Franklin declared. My tree has to be big enough to play in today. I fear Franklin's going to be disappointed, friends. But when Franklin got to the front of the line, Mr. Heron gave him a sapling the same size as the others. Can I have something bigger? asked Franklin. This is a sugar maple, replied Mr. Heron. Many years from now, it will be a very big tree indeed. Franklin nodded sadly. He put the sapling in his wagon and walked slowly home. Look at the little sapling tree right here. Not quite the giant tree he expected to get. The trees take a while to grow, right, guys? You can't just get a giant tree and plant it. How would you even do that? Franklin sighed as he stared at the huge hole in his backyard. He shoveled earth back in until the hole was small. Then he went to get his sugar maple, but the sapling wasn't there. Franklin looked all around the garden and up and down the lane. He must have fallen out on the way home, he decided. At lunchtime, Franklin told his parents about losing his tree. But it doesn't matter, he added. It wasn't big enough to play in. Big or little, you promised to care for it, said his father. Franklin slumped down in his chair. <sighs> All right, he sighed. I'll go look again. Franklin followed the path back to the park. By the pond, he saw Beaver. Her sapling was tied to a big stick marked with notches. It's a growth chart, Beaver explained. In three years, my tree will be taller than me. Hmm, thought Franklin. He began to look a little harder. In the meadow, Franklin saw a rabbit with a watering can. I planted my sapling where it can get lots of fresh air and sunshine, explained Rabbit. And I'm going to water it every day, he added. Franklin thought about his sugar maple. If it didn't get sunshine and fresh air and water, it would never be taller than him. Franklin started to hurry. Uh-oh, I think Franklin's getting worried. I'm thinking Franklin is realizing that his friends are going to love their trees and that because of that, with the watering and the great places that they planted them, their trees are going to grow, and now he's not going to even have one. Near the woods, Franklin saw Bear painting a small fence, bright red. Inside, it was Bear's sapling. 
This will protect my pine tree until it's big and strong, Bear explained. I don't want anyone to step on it by mistake. Franklin thought about someone stepping on his sugar maple. If that happened, it would never grow big and strong and be taller than him. Uh-oh. I think Franklin's getting a little more nervous each time he sees a friend planting and caring for and loving their saplings. Franklin told Bear everything. I've looked all over, Franklin moaned. Now what do I do? Maybe someone found your tree and gave it back to Mr. Heron, Barracks suggested. Franklin cheered up and ran off to find Mr. Heron. Back at the park, Franklin saw Mr. Heron packing up boxes. How's your sapling doing in its new home, Mr. Heron asked. I lost my tree, Mr. Heron, Franklin replied. I've looked everywhere, but I can't find it. Mr. Heron reached into a box and lifted out a sapling. Is this it, Franklin, he asked. Someone found it on the path. <gasps> My tree, cried Franklin. Thank you, Mr. Heron. I'm going to plant it right away. And Mr. Heron smiled. Before Franklin left, Mr. Heron showed him a photograph. That's me when I was your age, he explained, planting my first tree. Did it grow? Franklin asked. It sure did, Mr. Heron laughed. We're standing under it. Franklin looked way, way up. You planted the treehouse tree? He exclaimed. Then Franklin looked down at his sapling. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. So here's, this is a cool picture. Here's Mr. Heron when he was little, when he planted this tiny sapling, and now that's their treehouse tree. Took many, many years to get that big. Franklin hurried home, his sapling held safely in his arms. He planted it and watered it, and then he checked on it every day. And every day, Franklin was sure that his little tree grew a little taller and a little stronger, just like Franklin. Friends, I love Franklin stories. If you could see by this book, it has crinkles in it. It has wrinkles in it. It was my boy's book when they used to read or listen to Franklin. Um, so I have a bunch of Franklin books. He happens to be one of my favorite characters. He always learns a lesson from his stories. And I hope that we can learn a lesson from his stories too. Other than that, enjoy the read of the story, friends. See you later.